there's a lot of good charts out there from the Wall Street Journal, Charter, even the consulting firms themselves make really good charts. But there's something about charts from The Economist that's just so appealing. Why is that? To answer that question, I went through every Economist chart I could find, took detailed notes, and compared them with some of the best chart makers in the business. And it turns out the answer is a little more complicated than it looks. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I found. I'll show you the four main reasons why their charts are so effective and how you can use the exact same techniques in your own chart making. Hey everybody, Paul here from Analyst Academy, where we teach people how to make better presentations based on best practices from the consulting industry. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you check out our advanced courses at theanalystacademy.com. One more thing before we get started, you can find direct links to all the charts used in this video down in the description below. The first thing I noticed about charts from The Economist is that they're all very simple. Almost without exception, you can understand all of them within just a few seconds. Take this chart about COVID-19 in China, for example. It shows how 1.3 million people are under medical observation in China currently. And everything about this chart is pretty simple. There's a very basic title and descriptive title right here. The chart itself is just a basic line chart, which is probably the easiest chart there is to understand. Font is a nice sans serif font that's really easy to read. And even the colors are just a basic black, red, and gray. Everything about this chart gets straight to the point. Notice even how these months down at the bottom, instead of writing out the full names of the months, they just write out the first letter, keeping the chart simple and focusing on the actual data. Here's another chart about the World Cup that's really simple and easy to understand. Basic title, basic subtitle, basic bar chart. There's minimal distractions and they just focus on the actual message of the chart. But aside from the simplicity of their design is their choice of charts. If you scroll through their website or on their Instagram page, a lot of them are line or bar charts, which by far are the simplest charts to understand. The number one goal with your charts is readability, not trying to impress your audience. And this is something that The Economist does really well, especially compared with some of the consulting firms. Here's another simple bar chart that shows share price changes for Snap, Netflix, and Uber. And you can probably understand it in just a couple seconds. Likewise, this one about homicides in the US is a basic line chart that you can understand really quickly. Or even this one about Russia climbing out of a recession. Again, this is because of a simple title and font, simple colors, but most of all, because of a simple chart. Of course, they do have complicated charts from time to time, but by and large, they keep it simple. Reason number two, and this is a big one, they match the chart to the message. Here's a chart that shows how Queen Elizabeth II was the longest reigning monarch in British history. It's a bar chart, which is the perfect chart for comparing values because it's clear which is the longest. In this case, they're comparing the years of each monarch's reign, and it's very clear where Elizabeth falls on this list and how she compares with all of the other monarchs. And if you're trying to tell stories with your data, this is an absolutely critical component. It helps your audience understand your message quickly and easily. Here we have a line chart about the price of Thanksgiving turkeys in the US. It's showing how the price of a turkey has gone up, expressed as a year-over-year -year percentage. And a line chart is great for this because it shows change over time. If this were in a column chart, you wouldn't be able to see these nice sloping lines, which emphasize the change. Plus, you can see these other comparisons really well, with the all items comparison and the food comparison. Or this stacked area chart that shows spending by international tourists. It's a stacked area chart which is good for showing the combined total, while also giving a breakdown for each category. You could think of it like a line chart and a column chart combined together. The focus is on this top line right here, but being able to see the breakdown is also helpful. Reason number three is that they guide you to the insight, and usually they do it very subtly. This is a chart about Taiwanese identity, and they've given a very simple but clear title that tells you exactly what they want you to know. But then they've used color to actually highlight that message. So this dark red line tells you exactly what they want you to know. And then to a lesser extent, this red line right here, while this gray line kind of fades into the background. What this does is it helps the audience understand your message. You don't just want the audience to understand what your chart is saying. You want them to understand the message you're trying to communicate and how the chart supports that message. And you can do this with things like a strong title, the use of color, or even adding shapes to your chart. This bar chart about nuclear power is another really good example. The title is strong and it's clear. Nuclear power is one of the least deadly sources of energy. But then notice how they've bolded it down here. In other words, they're connecting the message with the information actually shown on the chart, which sounds like a pretty simple thing to do, but you'd be surprised how many people forget to do this. Then there's this one about food price inflation. It says food price inflation is nearly three times higher than pre-pandemic forecasts. Again, strong title, and then of course, bolding, 
and a nice dark red line that supports that title. But one thing that's interesting about this chart and about all of their charts is this red line right here. Yes, it's part of their logo and it's part of the branding, but the other thing that it does is it draws attention to this title right here, which is gonna help your audience understand your message because the title says it very directly. So this is yet another thing that The Economist does to help their audience understand their message. And they do it on pretty much every one of their charts. Which brings me to reason number four, consistency. Something that The Economist does really well is that they're consistent with all of their charts, on their website, on their Instagram page, and in their print versions. Yes, there's a little bit of variation from chart to chart, but by and large, they follow the same colors, the same design, and they use the same principles that we've discussed today. Simplicity, matching the chart to the message, and helping the audience focus on your message. Looking back at each of the charts from this video, notice how similar they all are. They're simple, the chart matches the message, and they guide you to the audience. Then on top of that, the colors themselves are very consistent from chart to chart. And yet this is just another way The Economist reduces distractions and helps you get to understanding quicker. Most of the charts we use today came from Instagram, but even the charts on their website, although structured slightly differently, share many of the same features of simplicity, guidance, and proper chart selection. The Economist doesn't create perfect charts all the time. They do make mistakes, but what they are able to do is pretty amazing. They're able to take a mess of data and numbers and turn it into a compelling story that anyone can understand in just a few seconds, which if you ask me, is pretty remarkable. So if you're looking for some good examples of how to build good, effective charts, The Economist might just be a good place to start.